Are you ready to retire but full of questions about your benefits? Stay with us for a discussion about retirement benefits coming up on this episode of The Issues. I'm Sarah Bernard, host of The Issues. Thanks for staying with us. There was a time when we could retire once we turned 65. However, according to the United States Social Security Administration, there are special requirements to retire depending on your year of birth. If you were born in 1957, for example, you would have to wait until six months after your 66th birthday to receive your full benefits. There are many questions that people have about their retirement benefits, and we have some people here to help answer some of those questions. First, I'd like to talk to a citizen of our city of St. Louis to hear about how she is preparing for her retirement. I have with me Cheryl Nelson. So Welcome, great. Cheryl. So glad you're here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, and we invited you because you are you really represent um, the community of St. Louis, and you're preparing for your own retirement in a few years, and you've been very methodical about that. So how, when did you start thinking about retirement? Did you start when you were younger, or did you start when you were getting closer to that retirement age? Okay, for clarity, I am still younger, <laughs> but I, I started probably in my early to mid-30s. Uh, what I did was look down the road to see uh, what would happen to me uh, at retirement, at the point of retirement. And then the, the matter of Social Security came in, and do I have a pension? So there were a number of questions that I had to answer for myself in order for me to be prepared to retire. And that required for me to look at my finances to say, okay, I would like to open an IRA or I would like to buy a treasury bond. There were There's no one specific way, but a number of ways in which I Approach. So how did you get educated? So did you go to your company where you were working and ask questions? Did you read books? What were some of the things? Because these are not necessarily questions that everybody thinks about. Well, when I started getting the notices from the Social Security Administration about you're going to have to have this number of quarters for you to retire, so you need this number of years, uh, and that combined with the previous employer's current employer, uh, what I have available, what would I have available, and at what point. So at 62, I would be able to collect this number of dollars, but only if. So there's always a caveat next to your age. There's mm -hmm. a caveat in the caveat. So I have to be proactive and say this this amount of money in order to match what the company probably had for me at a particular time. So you have to really be aware. I just simply honed down and I read all of the material from the Social Security Administration and then uh, I worked at a packing company decades ago and I had, uh, they would tell you about a pension, which now is, is long gone. It's, mm -hmm. We no longer have pensions. Uh, well, some of us do. But, but the they're not very common not, anymore, you're they, right. They're not, they're not commonplace. So the corporations expect for you to save. And for in order for me to know certainly what I have, I so decided that I would take various avenues and diversify my own portfolio with what the Social Security Administration would have. But I wanted to be very careful and very definitive in my actions because I cannot depend on an outside agency to take care of me. Right. So when you were in your 20s, for instance, were you thinking this way or did it really start, like you said, in your 30s, you started getting the Social Security notifications? There are factors that impact your life. Uh, St. Louis has been very good to me. When I was 29, I was diagnosed with cancer uh, and it was a fatal blood disorder. So the fact that there would be a real possibility that I would no longer exist on this side of the realm of, of life, uh, I decided uh, when I got better, that I would begin to look at uh, what does retirement look like? Am I going to live to retire? Mm -hmm. So uh, therefore, uh, it was a major issue in order for me to organize myself, organize my life, because I have, at the time, I had small children. And I wanted to make sure that they were very well taken care of with what I would leave them. So that would include uh, whatever retirement I had and whatever retirement plan I had uh, established. So from that moment forward, there, I, I had begun to identify with my, my own financial responsibility and reconciliation. I reconciled to myself that I owe myself at least $500 a month 
in order for them to, for me to sustain if I'm still here, or for them to be sustained once I depart. So 500 months in savings. And it was a major life event, mm -hmm. and that's what tends mm -hmm. to happen. People have major life events. They get married, they get divorced, there was a death in their family, there's, a, there's a serious illness that makes you look at your own um, life and what's coming and your mortality, and that often is what creates this need to start planning. So we have a couple minutes left, and you've got an interesting personal <laughs> system here of organiz organizing yes. your finances. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I do. I have what is called, for me, I call it my financial accountability and responsibility and reconciliation. What am I reconciling? I am reconciling when I get paid and what I owe to myself. Love yourself and take care of yourself. So what we have here is I'm going to talk about specifically about my IRA, Roth. So when, when I look at the perspective, I look at my perspective from a monthly perspective. I know that I get paid every Friday. So the Friday prior, I write down every debt that I have. But at the top of it, I don't consider this debt. I consider it my IRA and to be comfortable in my future. And I take folders. So this is a, a notebook. So for the month of May, everything that I, I designate for my IRA, it goes in here so I can look it up. I can look at it and from a, per a perspective of, am I meeting my monthly projection? So mm -hmm. there are 12 months in a year. So if I'm saving $500 or let's say I'm saving $1,000. So at the end of the year, I know that I should have what? $12,000. So if this doesn't reconcile to $12,000, I have to go back and find out what did I do or what did I did not, what I did not do. And if once I find it out, once I identify, this is my reconciliation folder. So I go and reconcile. And so also, you're looking at your spending. My everything is accounted for. Mm -hmm. So I already know that I have utilities. So I'll identify about how much. And sometimes it's a simple estimate. Mm -hmm. I'm identifying what my, my utilities may be. My groceries, these are the things that you know you're gonna have. Your homeowner's insurance, mm -hmm. your auto insurance. And if you have an auto note, I make certain that I have everything. But Sarah, the key for me, for me is to do the annual projection. Because sometimes in the annual pro projection, there may be an interruption. What's an interruption? Uh, something happened at the house. Uh, you needed new windows. I needed an HVAC system last year. And it impacted my IRA by $14,000. Right. So you have to be prepared. And that's what I'm talking about, the reconciliation. Yeah. So you have adult children. I and do. how what are you doing in all of your planning to help them plan for their own futures? I challenge them and I challenge them financially. What I will say to them, now although they are self-sustaining, uh, they take care of their own household, I tell them I will I will meet you. Challenge is what I say. Uh -huh. And they look at me like, what are you talking about this time? So the challenge is, and I do this with my daughter, I told her, I said, if you identify an IRA Roth, wherever it is that you want to, and whatever it is that you deposit, I'll match that every month every month and if we have a late start so if we even if we start in may i'll take it to may 2025 and if you want to up the ante and just to give them an incentive if you want to up the ante i'll do a hundred dollars for you every month not that i have to sarah i don't but i do want to teach them i have a, a grandson and to whom I'm glamma. So I have already begun to save for him, but instead of buying toys for his birthday shoes, okay, I know that every year he's gonna have a birthday. I'm taking a thousand dollars. So I teach my, my adult children, uh, here, here's the money, and this is how we're this is how we're going to do it. So let's multiply into the future. So mm -hmm. if we're multiplying twelve thousand uh, dollars over four years, you have that. Forty-eight thousand dollars, or whatever. Yeah, so you're teaching is. even your your little grandson. It's called generational yes. wealth. Yes. Let's get it started. Absolutely. So, in in addition to your planning that you have here, you have a tote that I you were do. telling us about. So, <laughs> what is with the tote? Well, the tote allows me to have everything that I need uh, to access immediately. So I, I only take it out when I am effectively using it, which means I use it every week and every other day if something comes in the mail. So I want to highlight that uh, instead of contributing $500, this month I'm going to do 1000 And I highlight it and I highlight what account is it going to come from. So I'll know uh, this is what I spent. I didn't spend it on a nice pair of shoes or a nice bag. I kept my commitment. I sacrificed to keep my commitment and I'll highlight it. And maybe I'll put one of my clips on it to say, this is what you so have. All of this goes in the tote. All of this goes You've in the tote. You've got your financial tote. 
I, 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 I love it. I do. And this is great. You are obviously extremely organized and what a gift <sighs> that you. is to your Thank family you. and to yourself as well. It sounds like Cheryl has a great plan for when she retires. She makes a rest of us feel a little disorganized perhaps, but that's okay. We've got solutions coming up. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be joined with a financial advisor and a licensed healthcare insurance agent who have lots of great information for you. We'll be right back. I'm your retirement fear, but don't be scared. You're still in pre-retirement. Does that mean I have more time to plan? Precisely. This is pretirement.org. This isn't scary. I'm doing it. Yeah. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. In case you're just tuning in, our topic today on the issues is retirement benefits because we know that most people have a lot of questions and uncertainties. We're joined now with Mark White, a licensed health insurance agent to talk about Medicare benefits and also Christopher Harrell, a financial advisor for CKH Financial. We're gonna start with Mark because Medicare is a beast of its own that has pe people baffled, Mark. Yes. Uh, help us understand Medicare a little bit more and what we need to know about it. So where do we even begin? You've got- <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so Medicare is one of the uh, uh, the really good things about turning 65. Uh, uh, you're eligible for Medicare when you turn 65. So everybody, every U.S. citizen. Every U.S. citizen. Um, and and uh, if, if, you're, if you are disabled, um, prior to age 65, uh, uh, after be being on disability for two years, you, you are eligible for Medicare as well. So you'll find some people uh, who, are, who are younger than 65 uh, can also sign so up. Long, so you have to be disabled for two years, unable to work, yes. as you would then qualify for Medicare earlier than 65. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So talk about uh, what is Medicare exactly? Well, Medicare is, it's a, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a government, um, um, health policy, basically, uh, that's, uh, you know, is geared towards o older adults and people with disabilities. Uh, once you, uh, once you're on Medicare, um, you, you have, um, there's two parts to it. It's called Medicare A and Medicare B. Medicare Part A is your hospitalization. Medicare Part B is kind of everything else. It's, um, doctors your, visits. your doctor's visits, outpatient surgeries, uh, tests uh, and those types of things. And everyone qualifies for both A and B. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But it's not free. Okay. I mean, you actually pay into it uh, as you're working uh, through payroll taxes. Um, but if you've worked more than 10 or than uh, 40 quarters or 10 years, then your part A is free. Okay. Most people are, you know, if you're married to someone who, who also worked that long, uh, you're, you're also eligible for free part A. Part B, however, is not free. Uh, Part B, uh, for most people, this year is $174.70 a month, and that kind of changes every year. Um, if you're if you're low income um, and on Medicaid, which I'll talk about that real quickly, mm -hmm. uh, then you actually get that for free. Um, it's paid for by the state. Medicaid. Medicaid, right? Medicaid pays your Part B premium. Gotcha. Okay. So then you don't pay anything for Medicare A and B. But if, if, you, if you're like most people, uh, depends on how much money you make, higher income people are going to pay higher amounts than the 174.70. Okay. Okay. So it really depends on, is it like, the, like similar to Social Security, the last five years of your working or salary average or yep. high years? What they look at actually for your Medicare Part B premium, which is variable depending upon your income, they look two years back. So okay. if you're if you're signing up for Medicare in twenty twenty four, they're looking at your twenty twenty two adjusted gross income. And and then if, if that's if that's below for a married couple around two hundred and some odd thousand dollars uh, for a single person less than you know, less than a hundred thousand dollars. Um, but again that changes every year. So the month you turn sixty five is when you qualify. The month you turn 65, uh, is if, if you were born um, 
uh, on any day of the month other than the first of the month, then your your uh, Medicare Part A and B will start, well, your Medicare Part A will start on the first of that month. Medicare Part B, because there is a premium associated with it and because people tend now to work longer than past age 65, then you don't have to sign up for Part B unless you're going to drop your your insurance through your employer. If you're on a group plan or married to someone um, it, it, and on a group plan, then um, th then uh, you, you don't want to sign up for Part B. Okay. But, but and, and you can sign up starting three months before your birthday month. So you know, let's say you're you're born on September 18th. Okay, uh, you can sign up starting June 1st uh, for Medicare. Uh, and you can also sign up for a Medicare supplement or Medicare Advantage plan three months before. Okay, let's talk about Medica Medicare Advantage. Yeah, what is that? So Medicare Advantage is um, uh, it's an option to original Medicare A and B uh, and supplement. So option one is Medicare A and B and a supplement, and usually a a prescription drug plan. So that's option one. Option two. It's a Medicare Advantage plan, which um, usually comes with either zero or a very low monthly premium, uh, and it includes extra benefits like dental, vision, open counter products, um, uh, and you know variety of things, hearing aids, a lot of things, and it also usually includes your prescription drugs. So a lot of people are attracted by the Medicare Advantage plans, um, but some people prefer to go with a supplement. So there's a lot of options, and it sounds like it's something that, as you're maybe a couple years before you turn 65, you should start becoming educated about, start learning about it, talk to someone like you. Yeah. Obviously, um, you re really, you need a professional to help yeah, a license, your option. Right, and a licensed insurance a a agent who's familiar with the Medicare plans, who's licensed, uh, you know, and and um, you know is is uh, familiar with what's available in your area, and every every area, every county. Uh, in every state, um, it, the, there there are different Medicare Advantage plans. So, Interesting. So yeah, so so it depends on where you live as far as what plans. Are. And are you are you focused here in Missouri? Yeah, I'm. Well, right, I'm located in Missouri. Uh, most of my clients are in Missouri and Illinois, um, but I'm licensed in 16 states. So I have okay. I, I have signed up people up to, um, you know who live in other states, either move from St. Louis to Florida or or have. Uh, uh, friends or relatives that are in other states. So. Okay. All right. Very good. So there's a lot to learn. And I'm going to jump to Christopher Harrell here. Um, obviously, Christopher, you're a financial advisor. Um, the insurance part of people's plan is important. And I'm sure that you always look for professionals like Mark to direct people to get information about that. Let's talk about the financial side of our retirement planning. So we we saw Cheryl Nelson in earlier um, part of this episode talking about how she, as a, as a regular person, plans her financial future. Is everybody like Cheryl? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. She's a little intimidating. That She's obviously done a fantastic job of planning. Yeah. But a lot of people don't plan. Yeah. As she, as she I, I listened to your, your conversation. Uh, she's a great client for a financial advisor because um, it's almost like iron sharpens iron because uh, there's a lot of questions I know she would ask. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot of meetings that would happen. There's a lot of information that she may bring back to uh, to me as a, as a financial advisor, and we'll kind of hash out and figure out exactly which direction. We'll so you like a client like Cheryl, who's doing some of her own uh, research yes. and education, and coming to you with additional questions as well. Exactly. exactly. But I'm sure you get probably most of your clients are coming to you saying, "Where do I start?" Right. And What's the right age that, if you could pick an age to start asking those questions, just so we can all plan for to live till ninety five in financial freedom? When when do we start? When what's the the right time? I'm going to say, especially in this environment, the earlier the better. Um, we're currently in, I would say, I call it a retirement crisis. Uh, we're in a retirement crisis because we. We don't have pens pensions are not available for co companies that are offering pensions like they used to. Um, so we're in a we're in a, a time where what we're going to live off in retirement is going to be what we put away. Um, so I actually am having conversations with a lot of my clients and I'm talking to their kids because uh, there's opportunities for their kids, especially kids that have jobs to earn income, to open up IRAs and kind of start putting some money away. Yeah. Um, I wish uh, I wish I had a way of 
changing that name to retirement, you know, and changing it to something else that it makes a little bit more attractive. Yeah, to it's like year. lifetime financial planning. Right. Um, and and it is the t- our time is different. I mean, back 50, 60 years ago, people would join a company right out of college and stay there forever and have a pension plan as part of their benefits. And people today are changing jobs every two to three years, working uh, as entrepreneurs, working they- for small businesses. There is no built in financial planning for the future. So we have to do it ourselves. That's right. You are correct. A lot of companies, um, you know, they, the companies looking out for themselves. Um, and I mean, they look out for the employees as well, but they also looking out for themselves. And pensions have a lot of compliance requirements, a lot of funding requirements. Um, like you say, uh, the employees are not staying there as long as they used to. Um, and so companies are pretty much We'll offer that. We'll offer retirement benefit, but it's gonna we're gonna match or kind of help you along the way of saving for retirement. So yeah, that it's the onus is on us now to kind of you know. Put- Do you find that people don't have a good sense of their own budgeting and what they're spending? Do you find when people come to you that that's maybe a place to start a conversation? So it, it it's a lot of your own behavior because when you're serious about saving, you're serious. Mm-hmm. When you're not, you're not. And so I I can have someone come to me and they want to save for retirement. Um, but they, a lot of people I, I talk to, they're aware of some of the vices that they may have. They're aware of some of the shortcomings or some of the things in their life that may be impacting um, their, uh, their responsibility to save for retirement. Um, it's really up to us as professionals because they have people People have to live to a dual life. You have to save for the future, but also live for now. Mm-hmm. And that's a difficult process. Um, and so it's up to us as professionals to say that if we don't prepare for later, this is kind of what our future is going what your future is going to look like, which may, may be significant, significantly different than what you're living now. So do you find that people, when they come to me with you, are pretty honest about their financial situation and what some of those vices might be so that you can help them plan? Yes, yes. And I try I try my best to, to make my office a safe space because mm. uh, there's a lot of things that may be impacting your financial uh, situation um, that may be extremely personal. Uh, and, and, and I try to have a lot of empathy to say, okay, look, let's just put on the table what you're dealing with and let's put this puzzle together and try to figure out what's the best route to go to meet the needs that you're going to have for your family. Do you find, um, and Mark, you might see this too, people who are afraid of retirement because they don't have a plan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, and, and that's a scary thing because if, if you don't, you know, if you don't think about Medicare and and and, and, and what, what your options are, uh, if, you know, it's always easier to stay with what you've got. Many times, even if you're going to continue to work, uh, you're better off with a Medicare plan and dropping your your uh, group plan uh, because uh, the benefits might be better uh, for a lower cost. Yeah, and people just, they're in their own ignorance of knowing their options may, may yeah. make, make, make the wrong decision. Right. Um, Christopher, um, what do you tell somebody who is maybe afraid of those retirement questions or the that option? Yeah, I, I try my best to look more positive um, to what you may be dealing with. So you you may have someone that traditionally started, I mean, not traditionally, but maybe starting pretty late uh, saving for retirement. They may just start to understand what the retirement plan is like at their company, what are some of the benefits to it or what, or what it just comprises of. And I try to, if, if it really looks like that retirement may be something that not uh, may not have a positive uh, outcome. And let's figure out some alternatives. Mm-hmm. Let's let's figure out what 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 how can we earn outside of what you know the normal retirement years look like. Um, and so I, I I just I try not to just say that you know hey we're not we may not be in a good space right now, but let's try to do the best that we can uh, in your situation. And that kind of that tends to bring some a lot of clients to to a sense of peace. And you're able to um, look at a person's financial situation and give them an idea of when they can actually retire. Even if it's not 65, it might be 70, 72. Are you able to? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we have, you know, I have, you know, software and, and planning tools that, you know, we able to put the numbers in and kind of say like, 
uh, what you would need to live off of uh, and what you're currently doing. Uh, 65 may not be the, the ideal number. We may have to push that out one or two years. Uh, and if it looks kind of really shaky, then we may have to, um, we have to find some other ways. And conversely, if somebody comes into you at age 40 and says, I want to retire at 55, you can help them create the path to do that. That's correct. So they just have to start early. Yeah, start, starting early is always the best route. Yeah, all right, very good. So if each of you can give advice to a 30-year-old, you know, obviously at 30 and, and you're healthy, you're not going to uh, you know, be thinking about Medicare yet. So there, there really isn't, you know, a, a, you know, a lot of planning that you do other than to stay healthy. Um, and you get closer to, to retirement age, uh, you, you know, talk to your HR department and, and just uh, find out, uh, you, you know, what, the, what their, uh, their options are uh, as far as retirement plans. Um, but but I think it's probably more important to do the financial planning than it is to do the Medicare. So a 30-year-old, you say, start your financial plan. Yes. And stay healthy. Yes. Christopher, what about you? I, oh, I, we're on the same page. Um, I would I would definitely say, you know, let's get rid of that fear and let's get rid of the shame of, of not knowing what you don't know and let's figure out what you, what you know. And let's just step out there and just figure out where you're at. Some people really are not as bad off as they think they are. Um, and and we are here to kind of explain some of those things uh, that you may not understand and that you, and that you may not be comfortable with explaining or it may be some technical language that you just never heard of before. Uh, this this field can be really complex when it comes to the language. And, and intimidating. And, and intimidating mm-hmm. as well. Uh, so making it as simplistic as possible is is a key thing for us as professionals. Uh, and like, yeah, starting early, starting the earliest possible, that 30 row, um, let's not put off anything. Let's just go and get started right now. And then it starts with a conversation. Yeah. That's always starts with a conversation. Yeah. And the fact that you both have open doors to answer those questions for anybody is I think really important because a lot of people feel like they, they don't realize we have these resources right here in our community. So thank you both so much for being here today. I certainly hope our guests answered many of the questions that you had and you now better understand your retirement benefits. Retirement is a time to enjoy, not to fear. Please see their information on the screen if you still need more information. And I'd also like to say thanks to each and every one of you who tune into the issues and share your comments. This is how we get some of our show topics by learning what you want to know more about. Remember, you too can join the discussion anytime we want to hear from you. Log on to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit our website at stltv.net. Be sure to tune into our next edition of The Issues, where we'll have another informative topic that you would like to learn more about, I promise. Thanks so much for joining us today on The Issues. I'm Sarah Bernard.